Welcome to today's video about the Neolithic period. Moving on slightly from our last video, which was a review of the Mesolithic period, the Neolithic period is the New Stone Age. So the same way we told you to remember M for Meso, M for Middle, now the Neolithic Stone Age. We're looking at N for Neo, N for New, and Lithic again means stone. So while the Mesolithic was circa 7000 BC, we now have the Neolithic period coming to Ireland roughly around the year 4000. These new settlers still came by boat in those dugout canoes and these skin covered boats we talked about, but they were the evidence of the first farmers in Ireland. So when you're talking about the difference between the Mesolithic and the Neolithic periods, you're looking at the difference between the hunter gatherers that we talked about in the Mesolithic period and now the evidence of farmers in the Neolithic period. So we're now looking at the domestication and the cultivation of animals and crops, as opposed to just hunting the first things that you could find and using them for short term gain. So now we're looking at the long term product in farming, rather than the short term gain that would have been seen in hunting. A very important differentiation there between the two. Which brings us on to the first farmers. So the first farmers we now know knew how to grow crops. They used these stone age tools, these stone axes, to clear the openings in the forests. You're going to need examples of this if you're using this in the people in history question. So I have three of the most famous ones for you. I have Loch Gur in Limerick, I have the Boyne Valley in Mead, and we have the Cager Fields in Mayo. As well as clearing these new, you know, these forests for new vast areas of farmland to work on and to cultivate and to for the animals to grow and graze, they needed a domestication of animals. So the fact that they were able to tame and domesticate these animals too shows a level of sophistication that you might not associate with Stone Age settlers. Much in the same way that we talk about technology today, we still use refer to technology and use the word technology when we're talking about the tools and techniques and methods that were used back in the Stone Age. So even though we're talking about a difference of 3,000 years roughly between the Mesolithic period and the Neolithic period, it was still a gradual period of change. That too much didn't happen too soon. Our biggest development was probably the change from hunter-gatherers and relying specifically on hunting to now the idea of farming. So this small gradual process is best to be taught of in modern terms like an iPhone. So in the same way that there's very little difference between an iPhone 8 and an iPhone X, which in turn would have very little difference to an iPhone 11, just gradual small changes, it's the same thing between the Mesolithic and the Neolithic. So we're now looking at the difference in the houses. So the new houses were usually rectangular in shape. You now had these timber holes driven deeper into the ground and stones placed at the bottom to hold it in place. So we're looking at foundations, just like in any modern house. Walls are built up of timber and of wattle and daub, and you have wattle and daub. Wattle and daub refers to a type of construction where a house is made of a lattice of wooden strips. So the wooden strips are in rows across, and that's called a wattle. And this is then plastered or daubed with wet soil, clay, sand, and straw. So the first part, the sticks and the panels, are the wattle. And the wattle then, which was made by weaving these thin branches that are either, you know, whole or split between different sticks. And the daub, which was the earth and the soil and the clay, was used as a first form of, I suppose, cement, is the way to look at it. Willows, elms and hazel were commonly used, but any green branches were really adaptable. So wattle and daub did take up moisture, but it was generally seen to be as waterproof as possible. So it's estimated that in today, when if it's done properly and done correctly, a wattle and daub wall could last for in and around 700 years. So again, very advanced technology. And it's just a YouTube link here at the bottom if you want to watch more on how, that, how the Neolithic houses worked. So looking at work and food. The first farmers created small fields, again, surrounded by low walls. So again, as well as farming, we're looking at the idea of land possession and boundaries which wouldn't have been really seen with the nomadic Mesolithic people. Mattocks were used to till the land, or wooden ploughs were also used. So again, the first tools used towards farming. They grew wheat and barley. Evidence of a more sustainable type of food, relying on the land to make the bread and porridge. So their diet is improving. 
And again, animal skin, like we said with the hunter-gatherers and with the Mesolithic people, is still being used and not wasted for things like clothing. So we have the saddle stone and we have a map of just examples of what they look like. Tools and weapons were made of stone. Fairly self-explanatory. You know, you have your axes, your knives, your scrapers for cleaning the material and cleaning the animal hides and skins, and arrowheads. So you're not just hunting when you're using knives and arrowheads, but it's still evidence that it was used for defensive measures, just in case they were attacked. Jewelry was in the form of beads and pendants and still made from stone, had wood and again the bones of animal. Pottery is a new development around this time, but there's also evidence of cooking, there's storage and there's burials. So if you're looking at this in people in history, or you're looking at this in terms of short questions, evidence in belief of the afterlife is here within the Neolithic burial customs. So you have megaliths. So these tombs, which were megalithic tombs, megalith, big stone. And the three main types you see here is cork cairns, portal dolmens, and passage tombs. What I would say, though, looking at that, is this could be used as a picture question in that picture is you know one and two you're given a picture and you ask questions about it so it's important to be able to identify the difference between the three so our first picture here is the core cairn and we have the one from caro keel as our example but look at the shape of it look at the design of it often you will get one or two marks going for just being able to name what this structure looks like all three structures look vastly different so it's just to know which is which. So our core cairn. So the cairn is at the mound of small stones. You had upright stones then forming an entrance which led into some passage or some burial chamber. These tombs were semicircular in the front of it and archaeologists think that they were used for cremations and burial. Probably the most famous of all the types of burial tombs were the portal dolmens. You had three stones standing upright and a huge capstone on front of them. So these capstones were up to 40 tonnes in weight. So again, that there was a great degree of engineering needed here and mathematics. So again, showing how advanced the civilization actually was. Tombs were also covered by smaller stones, you know, to cover the entrance. But again, what we found there from archaeological remains that the bodies were both cremated and placed in pots under the chamber. And passage tombs, the megalithic ones, and our example is Newgrange. It's the one that we see the most on the news today. Similar looking to the core cairns, but much, much bigger. From the outside, the passage tombs look like a hill. Inside, there's a long passage leading to a chamber, and they vary in size. There's over 200 passage tombs in Ireland. New Grange was built around 3200 BC. So we know it came up the Boyan Valley. So it's again another example of materials being used, river being used for transport. But because the farming community built it along the Bruna Boina, it's also perhaps evidence of trade. That the river is being used now as a transport system that was more advanced than we might have first thought, and the materials were coming possibly from all over the valley. So the idea of cooperation, that these farmers weren't just walk, working alone on their own land. We know there's different types of stones used to build it, and that they were log rolled up to Newgrange, and that there was, again, advanced building techniques for the time, with log rolling and wooden scaffolding. Now, the excavations at Newgrange, and what makes Newgrange so fascinating, reveals that there was five bodies in there. So there's the archaeological evidence of life. Now, if you're using this, guys, you can use the archaeological, you can use it as the work of an archaeologist in the people in history question, or you can use it if you're talking about people in history with regards to a Stone Age person in Ireland. Other artifacts are found in the chamber. We know it was used for ritual, it was used for celebration and worship. And the passage and chamber inside are aligned perfectly in the southeast direction and face the rising sun or the winter solstice. And this shows you again how advanced the Neolithic people were as engineers. That however they did it, the sun on the December 21st on the winter solstice will perfectly align, come in through the roof box and light up the burial chamber. It's still... A mystery to people today how they got it so perfect but it's just one of these natural wonders it's the small opening above the doorway which is known as the roof box allows the midwinter sun to penetrate the main chamber it occurs between december 18th and the 23rd 
but the big one here is of course the winter solstice on the 21st and this tells us that perhaps the reason that the sun has such importance in on the burial chamber means that it was used for the Celts or the early settlers before the Celts worshipping the sun. Okay guys, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. I'll be back soon again with another video.